Okay. Uh, Jenny, are you still here? I am. Yes. Hi. How are you doing? Where are you from? Santa Barbara, California. Okay. Uh, so, I'm good friends with Dan Blank, who you mentioned earlier, and highly recommend his Substack course. I put a link in the chat. And um, I'm going to sign up for your course, I mean, your program in January, Tad. I just, I have to say, I've been running a business for a long time. I've been very successful, and I'm ready to blow up the way I've done marketing. And I've been doing a really deep dive into your free resources. It's bonkers how much you give away and it's beautiful and I'm all in. So oh. shameless plug from someone that hasn't given you a dime. <laughs> Thank you so much. Very kind of you. Um, okay, so your question was, you said many of my natural hubs serve my clients' clients and I'm struggling with the pitch. Um, can you walk us through that in, in your situation particularly? Yes. So my business is that I help underpaid writers, exhausted freelance editors, and burned out English teachers become book coaches. So I'm training people to be book coaches and launch whole new careers. It's a brand new industry, and I'm one of the only people doing it. My hubs are all the places writers congregate. So writing conferences, podcasts, um, it could, I mean, all the way down to agents. I did your, your hub map and there's a lot of them, but whenever I go to pitch myself at those places, they want me to talk about writing. I have a lot of frameworks to help writers. That's what I teach. And I have a lot of resources to help writers and what people want are, are either me to teach the writing or for my coaches to teach the writing. Not many of them want to hear about, oh, I want to, I want to teach your people how to do this other thing. They don't, there's kind of a hostility. And the conversation you had, I think it was with Deborah about convincing the, the government folks that are her sort of so-called enemies to be on her side was very helpful to me. I think it's the same idea here. There's, um, I don't, they don't really want to hear what I have to offer. They want to hear this other thing. Got it. Okay, let's take one of those because there were kind of three examples. Uh, so what's the one you'd want to focus on most right now? Well, uh, conferences, writing conferences. So I, okay. No, no. Uh, the, you said editors, English teachers, those three, which of those three do you want to focus on? Underpaid writers. Okay. So they're underpaid writers. Who are they writing for? They are writing for themselves. They're trying to write books. Okay. And who's paying them? Nobody, basically. Okay. So they're un almost unpaid writers. What kinds of things are they writing exactly, though? They, so they, it's everything. They're writing um, novels. They're writing memoirs. They're writing nonfiction books. They, they want to have a life in writing. Writers want to have a life in li writing. That's the, their dream. So they're often going to conferences for learning or for understanding how can I make this my dream. And book coaching is a way to have a life in story and in words and in ideas without or alongside being a writer. So it's a great compliment to doing the work that they want. Right. It's like somebody who wants to be a musician, they might also get a gig hosting music shows. Exactly. They're still in the music world while they're working on their craft. Exactly. The trope is to get a job as a teacher. So, you know, you get an MFA and you get a job as a teacher in order to support your own writing and uh, book coaching is a similar teaching uh, way to make money while you're trying to make this dream happen. Okay. So um, then the question is, where, how do you find them? Like, what are the hubs for these people? Okay, so you have these writers and they're going to these conferences. Uh, and then you're saying the organizers of those conferences are, are a little hostile to the appearance of you trying to teach them how to be book coaches? Yes, they, uh, they're selling a dream and, and they're selling a particular path to that dream. Yeah. And usually if I, 
if I pitch something to them, I might pitch a few ideas. They always pick the one that's, you know, help, help our writers learn how to revise a book or learn how to pitch agents or learn how to make a book proposal. They never pick here's a way to make extra income or start a side gig or, or do this other thing. Uh -huh. um, okay. So there's a few thoughts. One is just to see if you can find one conference that will say yes to it. Mm -hmm. Just get one. Mm -hmm. You can get one of them on board and you can get a testimonial from them as the mm -hmm. organizer of that, that will help get the foot in the door. Like, hey, mm -hmm. we did this presentation at this other conference, here was the feedback on it. Here's what the organizer said, you know, about the session and working with us, et cetera. Uh, that's one. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I mean, if I'm the organizer of a conference, yeah, I want the thing that my people are going to want. I want my people to be happy. I want people to leave that. So if you can make the case and show them, this is what authors are wanting. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what they're craving is how to make money while they're building their dream. Mm -hmm. There's that. I also wonder if you could, there's this idea, if you search on YouTube, just had Hargrave uh, industry presentations, mm -hmm. I, you could, come up with a presentation where you say, I want to share the five best ways that aspiring, you know, authors and writers can make money on the side, like five best side hustles for 2024 for authors. Mm -hmm. And then you really do some research and you do a presentation where becoming a book coach is one of them, mm -hmm. but it's not the only one, mm -hmm. but, you, but you go to these conferences and say, look, here's the reality. You know, uh, most authors, they're not ready to do this full time. They're not ready to leave their job. And maybe they want, you know, um, they're realizing that the dream isn't happening fast enough. They need a side hustle, uh, you know. And I, there's a presentation we put together on like the five best kinds or the five trending ones or whatever you want to call it. And then that just becomes one of those five. And then you say, and if you're interested in this, that's what I help people with. Come talk to me after. Just sometimes uh, a presentation like that on a broader theme has a better chance of getting in because it doesn't just seem like you're doing a commercial for your stuff, you know, but it, it seems right. like a. Um, so that's one consideration. Uh, also, if you can just talk with, get on the phone with maybe a few of these organizers of these conferences or meet with them for coffee and just say, look, what's the resistance about? Just see if you can put yourself in their mm -hmm. world. Like why, mm -hmm. just, like to me, this seems like a natural fit. And why, why is there such resistance? If you can have even three conversations with people who organize these festivals, you may mm -hmm. just get something that clicks it. And like, ah, now I know how to present it. Um, and, you know, it might also be the kind of thing where sometimes that may be the best hub and maybe the hub will be other book coaches, other editors, other, you know, um, you know, where they just look at the, their person, they say, look, you're going broke. This book is not going to be ready this year. You need a side hustle. Have you thought about this? Mm -hmm. um, and then I also wonder about Facebook ads, if that might be a thing for you. You know, Facebook yeah, I've been ads. I've thinking about that. I have been thinking about that. Yeah. Um, these are great ideas. Really helpful way to think about it. All of it. Oh, good. And I know you don't teach um, tactics. Sure. Uh, Facebook ad tactics. Do you do you recommend within your program somebody who does? But, well, the, there's two I would recommend. Uh, one, Ross O'Loughlin, his website is conversionengineering.co.co. And any of you who are, um, I would say if you're still at the hobby level of your business, don't reach out to him. But if you've got something and you're serious, uh, you've been in business a few years, you have something, he could really help conversionengineering.co. And the other one is uh, Laura Eastburn, which is L-A-R-A. 
eastburn.com. They're both fantastic on Facebook ads. Um, so both of those would be people, uh, you know, I'd reach out to and feel very, fairly confident in uh, the results that you would get. Um, Thank you so much. You're welcome.